Okay, so uh, it goes over quite a long period of time. Um, I had a nephrologist uh, initially when I lived down in the south of England. And um, at the time, he told me that uh, he thought I had what was known then as Berger's disease. Uh, so I googled all of that up and um, was quite confused by everything that was available at that time. Um, and I'm going back about 20 years ago. Uh, he said um, there's really not much that could be done. Uh, and I was put on to a blood pressure medication. And, and that was kind of my journey for, uh, I guess, uh, a subsequent 15 years or so. Um, I then moved up to the Midlands in England and um, I was just going to see a GP at the time. And I happened to mention to him that I'd previously had uh, appointments with a nephrologist. And um, he said, well, you know, if your nephrologist thinks you have, again, he used the term Berger's disease, uh, then there's nothing you can do. Um, eventually your kidneys will probably fail and you'll probably have to go on dialysis. Um, at that point, um, again, I uh, Googled and um, uh, discovered that there was a lot of research that was happening um, in Leicester. Um, and I actually made contact um, with um, some of the team in, in Leicester and said, I'd like to come along and, and, and find out more about um, what you're doing. Um, spoke to my GP and um, uh, I think it's fair to say after uh, a little bit of um, encouragement and coaxing, um, he did a referral for me. Um, and literally that's when my uh, journey um, accelerated significantly because uh, within a few weeks I had a biopsy. Uh, within a few weeks of having the biopsy I had the diagnosis and subsequently I was then on to a clinical trial. So from very little happening for a very long period of time, um, that then accelerated uh, quite substantially back in October 2020. So this is an interesting one, um, and I was just chatting to um, a, a kind of a fellow patient um, over lunch today, and um, I, it might sound a bit strange, but I actually described the diagnosis as probably the best thing uh, that's happened in my journey, in the sense that I now know for sure, 100%, um, that I have IgA nephropathy. And as a result of knowing I've got IgA nephropathy, I can then um, firstly be aware of exactly what that condition is and what it means, um, but also plan ahead uh, quite far into the future um, should my kidney function uh, drop off. Um, plus, I can be very specific in terms of understanding what I would describe as the numbers of the disease. So for me, the diagnosis was actually a good thing from having had literally a couple of decades of, of, of not really knowing. So again, um, it's, it's a bit of an interesting one because um, until very recently, I had not met anyone with the disease. And when you talk to family and friends, even close family and friends, and, and describe um, kidney disease, and then you say IgA nephropathy, uh, you get that kind of strange look um, of what exactly is that. So I guess over the, the, the recent years, I've had to adopt a, a kind of a simplistic way or possibly oversimplistic way of describing the disease. Um, but um, I guess from my immediate family's point of view, again, coming from a long period of time of not knowing or not being sure uh, to now being in a place of actually being sure, it, it's better. Um, but obviously it comes with its good days and its bad days. And my wife, um, is probably aware of uh, the, the, the requirement to steer clear of me um, on those days when it's not so good and probably knows me very well uh, enough to give me space um, after I've been for my uh, regular appointment and after I get my uh, results back because I'm always uh, very keen to see um, exactly where those results are from the previous time. Again, um, I would say um, it's not the beginning of the end. Um, it's the beginning of actually knowing and understanding. And um, whilst uh, I uh, absolutely understand why some people would, would, would say a diagnosis or feel a diagnosis is um, a very, um, I guess, frightening and concerning and worrying time, um, I would say we're at a point now with all of the great work that's happening 
um, in Leicester and, and, and other areas around the world that are focused on IG anthropathy, that actually there's lots of positive um, uh, um, treatments that are coming through, if not, they're already today. So where it was once, uh, there's nothing you can do, and um, that's it, fait accompli. Actually, it's a very different picture today. So just to be educated and, um, and, and do what you need to do to, to, to manage the disease that you have. Uh, I'm probably going to start with the last question first. Um, and I didn't do this. Uh, therefore, that's why I would encourage others with a diagnosis not to do it. But as I read um, absolutely everything I could on the internet, and um, with the experience of the last few years, I would say that there's an awful lot of information on the internet which is more damaging than it is good. So I would say um, make sure that you, you, you get your information from reliable sources. And I would say that is your kidney doctor or your kidney team or your research nurse or, or whoever's got the knowledge to give you uh, really good information. Um, as, as I said um, on, on the previous question, um, it's, it's potentially the beginning of something very good for you in the sense that you'll be very assured of what you have and what you can do to, um, uh, I guess, best deal with the, the condition that you have.